Hello. I got the hottest guy in baseball right now, Peter Salmonetti, reporting for NYYNews.com. <laughs> Peter Salmonetti of the Salmonetti Source. Yes. Hey, Salmonetti. Man, you get no respect, man. All these mainstream writers are just swaggerjacking their ideas. Every time you get something right, they never give you credit. What do you like to say to these uh, stalkers? Because they are stalkers because they are <laughs> stealing your ideas. What do you have to it's, say about them? I get. I mean, at the end of the day, it's okay. I talk about it a lot because I think it's only fair. I mean, at the end of the day, you know it better than anybody else. I mean, neither one of us, you or I, are getting really paid to do what we're doing. And, you know, Buster only, for an example, yesterday, uh, when it came to the J.D. Martinez signing, one of, uh, one of my followers uh, retweeted that I was first and only jumped in quickly and said he reported it out on a – uh, Boston Network um, about Martinez, of course, never saying he was in a sign with the Red Sox, but that they were, you know, having conversations and whatnot, so on and so forth. But, I mean, it is what it is. I wrote back to him, nothing nothing really negative, just, a, you know, a shout-out would, would at least be nice. Um, you know, uh, there's been quite a bit now where, you know, they're, they're not going to shout-out. I'm at that point now where they're not going to ever say, um, I'm first on anything. It just doesn't seem like it's ever going to happen. But it's okay because, really, um, the followers are going up. People are retweet tweeting it out a lot, which definitely helps. I mean, um, you know, we're, we're we're both getting credit on the sense of when it comes to Twitter that we both deserve, and and we're seeing a lot more now. Exactly, but you forgot the main championship belt that you just received moments ago with Drury, the Yankees obtaining yeah. him. And one of these writers from the NY Post, I, I don't know if you want to mention his name, said that he said it first, but you said it months ago before that article that he wrote. Yeah, he, he mentioned uh, he mentioned that he said it during the winter meetings. I was talking about Corbin and Drury at the, almost at the beginning of the of the off season, basically a little after I believe when I when I actually came out when you got me back into talking about Yankee news and and uh, offering what I can offer to, to more to a broader audience. Which you heard that Yes that Network? You heard that Yes Network? When you cut the check to Peter Salmonetti of the Salmonetti source, you have to give me a, a percentage of that because I brought <laughs> right. the Salmonetti that's, source out of retirement. That, that's uh, actually 100% correct, no, no doubt about it. But, um, you know, his article, I think a little bit after Aaron Boone and all that is when I talked about Drury and Corbin as a possibility um, and then obviously kept continued to talk about it and then wrote uh, just a couple of days ago that the Diamondbacks and the Yankees were still in negotiation for Drury, are still talking about Brandon Drury, and that uh, Corbin was still a high asking price that the Yankees didn't want to meet. But, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's all good. Um, it's going to come around and everything's going to work out at the end of the day. Exactly. So... We all know that the Rays have become sellers. They're basically a Miami Marlins clone at this point. Archer is definitely going to be traded. Do you see the Yankees going after him? I mean, they they, they certainly can. They they certainly can. If if the Yankees can go ahead and get anybody, I mean, there's no doubt that Archer is a guy the Yankees can get. Now, what that cost would be, we, we would have to see. Uh, but, you know, I thought about it a lot and looking at the teams. I'm almost shocked in the sense that Arizona was not able to work out a deal to get Archer. And the only reason I'm saying that is on my most recent YouTube video, and I, I tweeted out just recently too, this team added another starting outfielder. They yep. have countless starting outfielders. I think they got I, – I might be wrong, but I think they got five guys that are starting outfielders that are good ball players. And I might be wrong about that, but I'm more than certain they got about five that they're going to have to trade at least one or two of those guys, and depending on who it is. But um, they very well could add a starting pitch. Now on the Yankee side, yeah, they could definitely add Archer. I mean, God, he would be he would be a welcome addition. He'd be wonderful. You know, I mean, but the scary have... thought though, Pete, that if the Yankees don't trade for Archer, we might see a team like the Astros or another team in contention <laughs> trade for Archer, which will make him freaking gods of major league baseball yeah i mean no doubt about it and, and i i got to believe 
that during these negotiations, Archer's name came up from the Diamondbacks and from the Yankees to figure out how they could possibly make this trade even larger. There's no doubt in my mind. You talked about a three-team deal of very before anybody did. Um, when it came to the Diamondbacks, and we, we had a three-team deal today. It just wasn't where we were expecting. But to me, I, I guarantee there's no doubt in my mind that Ellsbury's name was brought up, that um, uh, Corbin's name was brought up, that Archer's name was brought up in those, in those negotiations. There's no doubt about it. I think a, a lot of different things fell into place and different free agents signed elsewhere and whatnot, and it changed a lot of things up. But, yeah, I mean, the Yankees can, no question about it, trade for Archer. You know, you got Montgomery available. You got Florio. You got Andujar. You got a lot of guys the Yankees can trade and make a deal. Now, when it comes to Andujar to Tampa Bay, I don't know how that one would make a lot of sense. The only reason I say that is Tampa Bay has Matt Duffy. Um, they also traded, I believe, um, God, his name is, is slipping from me right now, but the shortstop or the third baseman they got from San Francisco, they traded Longoria for, they also feel could play third base. So they got a couple of options there, but Andahar would be a great pickup for them that could start immediately at third. Um, so, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, I that. think, uh, yeah, I think Andahar at this point, yeah, I think Andahar at this point is his trade bait. Uh, I think he's never going to see light of day playing third base for the Yankees. Just for the simple fact that the Yankees are making all these moves concerning third base, so I'm not sure he ever plays for the Yankees. And I guess, and I'm guessing he's been trade bait all along. Yeah, you mentioned something a little earlier. I don't know if I might have retweeted. It. I don't know if I did. I can't really remember. But you you basically said that, and I was thinking about it myself. And this kind of has last year written all over it. If you remember last year. The whole talk the whole time was that Glaber Torres was going to be the guy to take over third base. He was going to come up and play third because they knew he could do it. Yeah. Andohar came up and DH'd when they had the DH spot open, not third base. They wanted him as a DH. They know he can hit. The problem is the, the, the fielding part. The same thing that I talk about with a guy like Chance Adams. The Yankees knew they could call him up last year. They are not as high as they let people to believe on Chance Adams. It may very well be the same thing with Andahar. The defense might really scare the Yankees. In my honest opinion, the Drury uh, acquisition was basically in preparation for future moves, moving a few outfielders, but at the same time having him on your roster because he could play the infield at the same time. He's like uh, that prospect that the Yankees shipped off. Um, last year, the prospect that injured himself, now he's the, on the Oakland Athletics. What is his name again? Mateo. No, 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 no. Flower, um, Dustin. Oh, Dustin. Fowler. Dustin yeah, Fowler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's kind of similar to him. Yeah, the the, the whole thing with uh, Drury that I really like and that I think people are forgetting, this kind of has that Didi Gregoria sense to it, That whole the whole idea that we're going to get a guy that maybe a team isn't as favorable on, but we have inside knowledge on how good this guy is. And the Yankees had inside knowledge on this one. Um, they, they have excellent scouting, the Yankees. The Yankees have great um, uh, sabermetric scouts who look at those sabermetric numbers and really have a good idea on what they're going to do. Projections on Drury could be the same thing. This guy may come up and have a breakout year. I mean, you're talking about two years in a row – Decent production, struck out about 100 times, strikeouts are high, but this is a team that's going to strike out. We, we know that. Nobody's hiding that. But getting a guy like Drury that can play first, second, third, left, right, this is a good move for the Yankees, and it's not going to stop them from going out there and getting a Machado or somebody else later in the future. This guy could move around. He could play different positions. Now, he may very well lock down a position and, and, and really blossom into – a starting player. So you we'll, we'll think, see what um, happens, but it's a smart move. Yeah, do you think um, Wade is on his way out now that the Yankees got the uh, jury? You know, it's possible because you, you really don't see that opening for Wade right now. But Wade could very well start the year at second base or Danny Espinosa. I mean, they very well could start the year at second to hold Glaber down for a month. I mean, that that's also a real possibility. Um, but Wade, people are very high on Tyler Wade. You know, the Yankees are also not going to just give this guy up. You know, that's a guy that a lot of teams are intrigued by and would love to have. He's a starter right now on a lot of teams. 
I mean, that's how high a lot of scouts are on Tyler Wade. It's not just David Cohn. It's not just a couple of people. Of people around baseball, you read a lot of scouting reports. Most scouting reports believe this guy's a major league starting shortstop. Exactly. But in my honest opinion, that move that the Yankees just made, like I said before, I think it's preparation for a future move to be made. I'm guessing they're going to ship a few of their prospects for a starting pitcher because we all know that J.D. Martinez – just destroys the current pitchers on the Yankees like Tanaka and Gray. He has like crazy numbers against them. And I'm guessing the Yankees are going to move some of these prospects for a starting pitcher. Yeah, I mean, it's very possible. And then you also got to think, too, um, Brandon Drury is, is not arbitration eligible yet. So this guy's getting basically the league minimum. This doesn't affect the Yankees adding salary. So that's the other smart thing that Brian Cashman has worked this thing so well. The Yankees could still add Alex Cobb. If Alex Cobb continues to not get picked up by anybody or or there's less and less teams that are interested, he may very well get a three-year deal that, at a lower price than ever expected. So that's still a possibility. And then, of course, yes, the Yankees can trade for a starter. Now you got to think about who's available. You know, or, or maybe it could be very well that Arizona or, or, the, or the Rays said, you know what, let's stick to this smaller deal, but we'll continue to talk about Archer. And maybe they are still talking to the Yankees. Maybe they are still talking about Arizona. But there is definitely team. You got to think that the Rays are being. Here's the thing, too. And I've been knocking the Orioles a lot, but the Rays are doing the right thing. Exactly. If they should have copied it, what the Rays are doing. Correct. A one hundred percent. I agree. A hundred and fifty percent. If the the Rays are basically saying, "Look, we're not gonna. The Red Sox got better, and the Yankees got better." We're going to look to improve now as quick as we can by trading these guys. Archer is going to be traded. Colome is going to be traded. Now it just depends on when. Is it going to be before the year begins or is it going to be at the deadline? Either way, these guys are going to be traded. And hopefully they're smart and will decide on trading them to a division rival if it's the best package they can get. I think the Yankees need to upgrade their starting rotation by trading. I don't see none of these pitchers being – Cobb is great. But the Yankees really need a starting pitcher that can get strikeouts, that has velocity. This is the problem I had with them last year where they didn't get a power arm and settled for less. Sure, Sonny Gray's great, but the Yankees need like a showstopper, an intimidator on the mound. And Chris Archer, rather than Arietta, Chris Archer is your best option out there. Oh yeah, I mean when it comes to when it comes to the overall idea of adding somebody, Archer would be the best guy. I mean, there's no doubt about that because your your other names that you're we're trying that you can think of that are guys that have really pure dominating stuff. There really isn't many that we know as being available. You know, you look around the league. Um, Robbie Ray, who is my all time, go out and get him if you can, and if you can get him soon, that's unbelievable. 160 something innings last year, 200 and plus strikeouts. I mean, just absolutely dominating. What was he, 15 and five, something like that, and missed, I think, almost a month of the season. So, I mean, there's not really any of those guys available besides Archer, and the Yankees can make that deal. Um, on the free agent side, I prefer Cobb over Arietta just because he's used to the East already. He had his Tommy John surgery, he recovered. See what he can do now. I wouldn't mind him on a three year deal, two year deal with a player option or a team option. But there's not many names out there that you can really think of that the Yankees can add and throw right into the rotation now. But, man, I mean, it, it, going further and, and looking well ahead, if things work out for the Yankees now, you're talking about an offseason next year that is really intriguing. Exactly. I mean, it, it's, it's really going to be insane if you think about it. If the Yankees were to go ahead and say, we're going to add Machado, they signed Machado, Think about the prospects the Yankees have available. They don't have space for. Where do you You're think? Um, about... Exactly. Where do you think Mustakas is headed now? And this move doesn't mean that Ellsbury still can't be shipped. There's a high possibility that he can be traded still this offseason. But where do you think the Yankees stand with Mustakas now that they got through? Oh, the, the Yankees. I, I mean, I, I I count them out of Mustakas at this moment. It. To add Moustakis now really doesn't make sense. Um, because then what you're doing is saying, okay, well, hey, and here's the funny thing. Somebody said this on Twitter, and it actually makes sense. It made me laugh. It feels like the Yankees gave up more for Brandon Drury than they did for Stanton. <laughs> exactly. 
if you really think about that, they gave up Tyler Widener, who a lot of people believe was going to be a guy that could jump into the relief uh, relief role very quickly and dominate. And Nick Solak, on a lot of people, is a top ten prospect. So it right. feels like they almost gave up more. But really, uh, that and that's where I'm getting at. You know, you gave up a top ten guy, you gave up a good, very good relief pitcher prospect, and you're getting and you're getting back a young guy also in Drury. Do you want to make him a bench roll immediately, or do you want to see what you got? So, I mean, looking forward to Musakis, to me it wouldn't make sense because then you're almost saying, well, let's put Drury at second, and when Torres is ready, we'll just put him back on the bench. I don't think you give up a Nick Solak and a, a, a somebody like that for this type of deal. I think you want to see what what um, what Drury could do, but for me, I wouldn't be shocked to see the Padres now make a run at – uh, Mike Moustakis, but the Braves are still out there. I think the Braves make a lot of sense, and I also think the St. Louis Cardinals make a lot of sense for Moustakis, but he's going to still, I believe, get a three-year deal or so. Somebody will come in and, and, and bite the bullet and grab him. Makes a lot of sense. You might be able to get a bargain deal for a guy that could pop you 30-plus homers a year for the next three years, uh, especially with that big free agent market coming up next year. You might as well try to grab a guy like him now if you can. But uh, not to the Yankees. It wouldn't make sense at this point. Exactly. But um, like I keep saying, I think the Drury deal is forecasting a future deal. I think Andahar is good as gone on the Yankees. I think they're going to trade him for starting pitching. And I'll be insane enough to say, hey, maybe Torres might be a name being talked about if the Yankees are going after Chris Archer. Potentially. But, you know, the Yankees were also – you know, going after a lot of other guys, and we really heard early on that the the Yankees would not deal Torres, they would not deal uh, Floriel. Those are the and Sheffield. Those are the three guys that you really heard about that the Yankees won't deal. But even without them, I mean, and and that's what gets me mad about Baltimore because I remember when you talked about a long time ago when you said that Machado makes sense and and the Yankees and the Orioles match up well. You know, at first I was kind of like, ah, I don't really know. But then you think about it, well, you say, damn. I mean, if I was the Orioles, why? how do you not do this deal? And I, I still say that now. And I, 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 I always said the whole time I didn't think the deal would happen. But it does make sense. And the, or, it just proves what a bad organization yeah, the Orioles are. they're really stupid. I mean, it truly does. It baffles me that they can even have fans at this point. I mean, if I'm an Orioles fan, you know Machado's leaving. Get what you can now and, and make that deal so – I mean, the Yankees, even if they even if they go to most teams and go, look, uh, Torres is not available, Sheffield is not available, Florio is not available. These are the three guys we want to hold on to. You're looking at a top five prospect in in uh, in Andujar. That you're right. You are 100 percent correct. You can trade him now. Exactly. I, I, got, I, I think he's never going to see the light of day on the Yankees because. Um, I mean, there there is no question that you are 100 percent correct that you can trade Andujar right now with Drury there, with Wade, with Torres, yep. with Torres, with uh, uh, Espinosa. you got guys that can cover that position. So at the end of the day, you're 100% right. If the Yankees are able to make a deal and you can offer, without the three guys that, are, that you're going to say are your guys that you, you will not trade are just the non-tradables, you still got Andahar. You got Montgomery, who you can deal if you're adding a good starting pitcher. You got Chance Adams. You know the, the list. The list goes on. You got Albert Abreu. You got Domingo Acevedo. You got Domingo Herman. You got tons of guys that this team can still trade to add a front line starting pitcher. Now it's all up to what Cashman, what other moves he has. Let's but, say, let's say the Yankees got Drury to be a super utility player, and let's say the Yankees make more moves because I really see him. I see the Yankees getting him as a utility player, and I still think the Yankees are still in the running for third baseman. But let's say they obtained the, they obtained a jury for this. I could see them designating for Simon um, Torres. Okay. Since since you jury is going to become you, become their utility man. Yeah, well, it, 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 that's if they add somebody else. Because right now they already got they already DFA'd Blash, which we know about. So Jabari Blash has been designated for assignment with the Drury signing. Now yeah, with the Drury with the Drury trade. But again, you're right. If they were to to, to make some big splash and got a Manny Machado, or if they find Musakis, I can see that. Yeah, I can see a, a Torres being um being DFA'd, or 
Wade, of course, wouldn't be that type of guy. Even maybe an Espinosa, even though he well, they really and can't also, talk about yet. It can be a move on the Yankees' part to make Scott Boris paranoid and say, "Damn, this guy's not going to be a Yankee because he wants him to be a Yankee to showcase him with that small porch out there in Yankee Stadium." True. I mean, I mean, I would. So it might be I a would. move where the Yankees said, "Hey, look." We're serious about third base. We just obtained Drury. So they might get Mustakas to sign at their price. It's possible. I mean, especially on a one-year deal. I mean, how easily do you say no? You know what I mean? You, you can't really just say no if he does come at you with a one-year deal. Now, I personally feel like if the Yankees are going to add salary, it's going to be through a starting pitcher, through a Cobb, or, or through a trade somewhere. That would make sense. But, you know, at the end of the day now – you make a very valid point that Miguel Andohar, with all the hype that he's had here recently, he can certainly headline a trade exactly. for a starting pitcher. Now, yeah, people again, are comparing him to uh, Adrian Beltre and stuff like that. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, no question about it. I mean, especially in the uh, bat first type process. This guy's going to learn the defense side. So, some team's going to get him to become an average defender if that is what is what his ceiling would be. And they're going to have a hell of a ball player for a while. Um, but really, if the Yankees are interested in headlining this guy as a, uh, a, a piece of the package, remember, they also got Clint Frazier. Now, Frazier have, has grown on me more, of course. I like Frazier. Always had back and forth about uh, whose bat will be better with Andujar and Frazier. I've always been an Andujar guy. But, you know, you also have Frazier that's available via trade. So the Yankees can make this deal depending on who it is. Now, I tell you one thing now. Uh, with Drury coming over, man, would have – would um, – uh, what's his face? I, I, I totally drew a blank here. But um, the Astros have got him. Cole. Yeah. Cole would have been an amazing addition to this rotation. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. He's, he's with the, the real rivals, who I think are the Astros, not the Red Sox. I think the real rivals of the Yankees are the Astros right now. So, you know, it's going to be – you got a couple of teams in that, in that American League that are really good. It's going to be a fun season. I am very interested on seeing what other move the Yankees make. I agree with you that they have to add a starting pitcher. I, I really believe that. I think they got a good rotation. I don't see nothing wrong with adding another starting pitcher. If you can add an archer, I mean, you are a ch- – you Yeah, are you gotta, yeah and you got to pay out. attention to this uh, trade. They barely – they, they traded supposedly top prospects, but we didn't trade those household names that people knew well of. So that makes yeah, me right. to believe that the Yankees are working on another deal to obtain a starting pitcher. Yeah, you're 100 percent right because Nick Solak is not a is not a commonly, you know, if you're not a Yankee fan, you don't necessarily know who Nick Solak is. So when the when the Rays got Nick Solak, they go, oh great, you know, we got the Yankees top five guy. They know that wasn't it. They had to look him up to see where he was ranked and whatnot. But um, a very, very good prospect nonetheless. But uh, I agree with you. I think the Yankees, of course, they did not surrender any of their real top guys. So we'll see. I mean, yeah, like I said, Endor is just so. Uh, yeah, Endor is good as going. He's not going to, like I keep saying, he's not going to see the light of day on the Yankees. Yeah. I mean, we can start that. That can certainly be the case. Um, again, I'm a I'm a big fan of Miguel Andohar. I, I really believe in what he can do. But again, a lot of the signs that you continue to see is that there is some sort of lack of trust or lack of faith in what he can do. I mean, very recently there was an article written about how high the Yankees are on him. But again, the defense is a is a real concern. There's no doubt about that. It reminds me so much of last year with him and Chance Adams when the Yankees seemed like they just refused to give them a chance because they were in the postseason and they did not think that they were their best option. And that means a lot. That's very telling. Exactly. I mean, like I said, I think the Yankees are going to move a few outfielders and Clint Frazier might be headed out because um, Drury, he also plays left field, correct, or right field, or something like that. He plays. He plays. He could play left, right, uh, second, third. And they say they're going to work him out first, also. Exactly. So I'm guessing the Yankees are just going to move a few prospects for starting pitching. Archer's just good as gone because, like I said, if another team in contention gets Archer, that's a really 
good weapon to add on their ball club. And the Yankees might be in serious uh, problems if uh, a team like the Cleveland Indians or Astros or Red Sox obtain Archer. Yeah, I mean, and, and the crazy thing is, you know, it's like you said, too, you know, the Red Sox said they wouldn't trade uh, um, uh, Bradley Jr., but with adding J.D. Martinez, they can trade a guy like Bradley oh, Jr. Oh, man, you're right, man. They're going to use him as trade bait, man. You're right. So Bradley Jr. could be a guy that you build your team around if you're to raise. I mean, the Yankees don't really have that to offer right now. A guy that is truly Major League ready, he's proven it at the Major League level, that could jump right in. And there's a couple of other teams ahead of the Yankees. Again, Arizona. You know, they got outfielders that are Major League ready that are guys that are popping 20-plus homers at the majors already, that they can trade that are under control for multiple seasons that they can trade, that the Yankees have the prospect side where we have much better prospects than those teams, including the Red Sox, who don't have prospects, who don't have many guys that are going to blow your socks off and say, yeah, the deal's sold, sold. If that's included, let's make the deal. They don't really have that. Cleveland also How about, um, doesn't Devers. necessarily have that. Do you think what Devers will be a trade bait for the Red Sox because yeah. they just I got mean, that, Nunez? That's another possibility. That's another possibility, you know, and, and, and you know, the Yankees, exactly, you're 100% right. They did just get Nunez, so it's very possible that Raphael Devers would be a possibility to be traded. You got Devers and, and Bradley Jr. that you might be able to dangle out there. And if so, I'm the Rays, I mean, you don't say no to that. You can't. Yeah, and the so, Rates I mean, have a history of trading with the Red Sox. That's the scary part. Correct. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's like you said, who it's has that race. relationship and, and who can make that deal, who's willing to give up those guys. Yeah, so, Archer's good as gone. Really, yeah, Archer's good as gone. It's yeah, just an arm Archer race. Be dealt. I mean, it's almost the same thing I said early on with uh, with the Marlins when the Marlins traded Stanton, and I said, okay, now you got to trade Yelich. And you got to trade Ozuna. They ended up trading both of them. Real Muto's still there, but I mean, at the end of the day, they're also going to trade. Now, him. Yeah, they're also going to trade that. Um, what's his name again? He has like um, light eyes. The the, the outfielder on uh, the race. Yeah, Kevin Kiermaier. Exactly. He says he wants out, just as Yelich said when he was in Miami. So it's probably. I going mean, to. I mean, they. I mean, they should. At, at the end of the day, and, and this is the other problem, too. This is what I brought up recently when it comes to the slow off season. It's a lot of these teams' fault, too. I mean, it, pe- people want to put it on the free agents and the agents. But you've got teams like the Orioles and the Rays who contended. It's not like these teams have never contended. You know, exactly. the Rays went to a World Series a couple of years back. The Orioles were in the playoffs a couple of years back. I mean, these teams are teams that do not look to spend money. Yes, the yes, the Orioles re-signed a couple of their guys. The Orioles were close to, to really going to the dependent. World Series, right, just a couple of years ago. Yes. 20, 2012, they faced the Yankees in a postseason, had a great postseason. That won the American League. I believe they won the East that year. I mean, just a, just a, a good team where they won the East one of those years around that time. I believe they won the division. Or they won, I know for a fact they got their wild And they had a meltdown time. with the Red Sox or something like that. Correct. I mean, I mean, this is uh, again. My, my, just my point is that you got too many major league ball clubs that are not competitive. They don't. They do not choose to compete. It's not that they can't. They're choosing not to compete. They're greedy. They, they make a whole so. bunch of profits off their revenue, that's and they right. barely invest in the players. That, that's right. And you already know. I live in Virginia now, so I mean, my closest stadium that I would attend is Baltimore. And I go to those games every now and then. And Baltimore has a very, very strong fan base. They're on the Inner Harbor in Baltimore, which is if you haven't. I mean, it's one of the best. It's one of the best fan bases. Come summertime, it's like a picnic there. They're all outside, um, like tailgating. It's like a football event. Exactly. It's it's a beautiful place. It's right next to the the Raven Stadium. The Inner Harbor has an aquarium. Just a, a beautiful, beautiful place to go to. To for a team like that that makes money, and mind you, that team makes money, to not want to contend truly bothers me, and it should bother baseball more than anything. But, I mean, we'll see what happens there. I agree. I think they should have traded Harper, I mean, Machado already. I think the Rays should definitely consider trading Archer before the season begins. Yeah, he's good as going. We'll see what happens. The the Yankees have 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 the players to get those guys. And and we'll see what happens. Hey, maybe uh, maybe Buster only or somebody will break the news. <laughs> <laughs> Buster only. So hey, this has been Peter Salmonetti of the Salmonetti Source. And yes, by mistake, I played 
the Simon Eddie Source's music. I was recording BP and I had his mixtape on. It's a great mixtape. I left the link. And you know, Pete, over 100 people downloaded that MP3 I left. Yeah. That's so, good. yeah, man. That's I, good. More, I, more to come. I brought um, P780 out of retirement. If you guys want to hear his music, just download that MP3, find his artist name, and support him as well. Definitely, definitely. Yes, he, he, you definitely did bring me out of retirement. It's funny, too, um, for the people who don't know, because I know we got – we got so many, so many people that will listen to this now. Um, it's been going on for years now, where Felix has been telling me to to get back into the Yankee news area, um, and now it looks like it's really taken off and, and is doing well. And you know, a lot of people from Yes is following me, and and I always, of course, shout them out. And hopefully, good things will happen. But um, yeah, you definitely get a cut of the check, no question. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Peter Salmonetti of the Salmonetti Source, the hottest name out there, really, in all the Major League Baseball, the mo most recognized freelance name out there, the Salmonetti Source. Follow him on Twitter, at Salmonetti Source. So, Pete, thanks again for coming on, and I'll check you out next time. No problem. Thank you.